Good afternoon. My name is Miguel Strickland, and today I'm going to present for you my capstone presentation over my action research plan and uh, another assignment that I completed during my coursework for EFD 552, and that is a diversity project. Now, my action research proposal was to reteach writing syntax to gain the interest and increase writing scores in young male writers. Well, the thing is, is during writing class, you can't just teach everything to the young males, and you, the females, of course, are included in that too. So it was mainly to target the boys, because once I sat down with my administrator and we were looking at problem areas in the school, we discovered that our writing over the past few years had dropped in percentages on the standardized testing, so um, our target was the young male writers. Now, so the purpose of it was to show that reteaching writing skills um, and increasing the time spent on performing writing skills would increase those scores in writing on a standardized test. And then also, students that were producing more written samples to, to teachers that would be scored on a rubric uh, would also prepare, uh, that would, we could do things to prepare them for interventions toward to that weaknesses that they had. So. Uh, if you look up here with me, the 2013-2014 writing readiness level, um, we've got the th uh, grades 3, 4, and 5 because those are the ones that take the standardized test. Um, if you would aim, direct your attention at the red arrow, that is the ready section right there. So for, in years 2013 and 14, at our school, uh, gr uh, grade 3, the readiness level, the students that were at that percent when they took this test were at 15 percent, and that's the male students. Uh, fourth grade that was at 17 percent and then fifth grade was at 36 so fifth grade was pretty good um, but not quite not even 50 and of course we'd like our numbers higher than that because that is students writing on their grade level for this test 2014-2015 if you direct your attention to the red arrow on the ready section um, third grade there was 30 31 percent of the young males that were writing on the grade level. Um, fourth grade, 20%. And then fifth grade, there was 21% of our male population uh, writing on their grade level, the standardized test. And in 2015 and 2016, uh, once again, please direct your attention to the red arrow. Uh, that's the ready section. Um, grades three, 21% uh, were, were, were writing on their grade level. Uh, grade four, 11 percent of our males are writing on their grade level. And then grade five, 33 percent. So while the scores, uh, they, don't get the, uh, they don't get the whole group as a whole because the females are not included. Still, just for our young males, we would at least like for it to be at 50 percent. Of course, even higher than that. Now, while we are not the lowest um, scoring school in our district, uh, we currently rank, rank third among the elementary schools, but we'd still like to increase uh, those writing percentages. Now, the ideas that I proposed in my actual proposal to um, administration was the first day of school, let kindergartners you know, give you a writing sample. Some of them will come in prepared to write more than their name. Others of them won't even be prepared to write their name. But you take a writing sample from them that first day, and then, of course, periodically throughout the year, and then at the end of the year, have that teacher kind of write a summary on how much the student has progressed. Uh, grades one through five, critique each other's writing. Let them do uh, a writing prompt um, or a writing sample, and then kind of, you know, let them pass it around to each other and let them critique them. Uh, give them pictures or sculptures um, to let them basically, you know, just write. Let them get their own ideas, let them create their own stories from that picture or from that uh, sculpture. So that way, maybe it gains their interest more. Um, laminate writing paper. Uh, and then give the students a dry erase marker and a dry erase board and then that's the same thing You could give them a prompt or you could let them come up with their own and just you know check different things their punctuation at the end of the sentence uh, uh, Does the sentence begin with a capital letter is their indentation? Um, make you know that's that reteaching that syntax because sometimes they forget the order or the structure that a sentence 
should even be composed in and a paragraph. Uh, free writing, just let them write. Don't give them a prompt. Let them write about something that interests them and then kind of see. And then that way we could go from there and even grade and make sure that the syntax, the structure, and the flow of the sentence are making sense. Um, and so that way we kind of have a, a general idea. Uh, give them a 20 minute writing block. This is the whole school at the beginning of class. And so that way everybody's kind of uniform doing the same thing. You don't even have to give them a full 20 minutes to write. You could give them something kind of quick, something kind of short, let them do a paragraph and you could take 10 or 15 minutes. And then after that, um, you could let them kind of go give them different tips and ideas on how it should be scored, different things to look for, that punctuation, once again, indentation, or you could let them pass it around. Now, actual implemented ideas uh, that, that occurred uh, were grades three through five uh, at our school. Grades three through five get electronic devices from the city. So K1 and two do not have those electronic devices. Uh, but anyways, three through five, they can use KidBlock. And so that way the teacher can assign a prompt um, in there and then the, uh, I believe the students can see what each other is you know after they blog that what they blogged about you can check punctuation then um, and then they can share different things with each other on kid blog uh, the core writing rubric um, we did not create our own rubric we are working toward doing that but we use the core writing rubric for each grade level uh, six plus one traits of writing composition notebooks each student in each class has a different color notebook for instance, second grade, um, they use a yellow notebook. So uh, the teacher at any point in time can say, take out your yellow notebook. The students already know in advance that they are getting ready to do some sort of writing assignment. Uh, and then uh, writing samples are collected every nine weeks. We did implement that. Our district, uh, we collect them, and we collect more than that, but there's one specific that the district assigns that is collected and submitted every nine weeks. Now, the standards that I feel that I've mastered throughout the course of the implementation of my action research plan was collect and use of data to identify goals. Um, what we had to do was go from the data that we already had, the previous year's test scores, and then as far as collecting our own, we'll go you know, with this year's test scores and see if the things we have implemented to this point have helped. And if they have, of course, then we'll add some more to it, you know, hopefully we'll be able to implement some more, like creating our own rubric. Um, create and implement plans to achieve goals. That is those different uh, ideas that we had uh, already implemented that we put into play as far as the uh, three through five using kid blog and, you know, the different, co different color journals that the students have and then the core writing uh, rubric that is used. Promote continuous and sustainable improvement. That is another thing. Of course, we have to make sure that we collect the data from the test scores and then go back and compare what it was the years before. Um, and even, you know, not only just the male students, but the female students included. And then monitor and evaluate the progress and revise plans. So once again, taking that data, we have to be able to plug it in, compare scores from the years, and then if there is something that seems uh, that if a particular teacher is using more that seems to be working, then maybe we need to implement more of that throughout because that could be the one thing that is really helping the students understand the, the flow of the sentence and the flow of the paragraph with that syntax and uh, writing order. And then more standards, maintain a culture of high expectations and challenge. Of course, we tell our students, hey, we want you to do the best that you can, but we want you to shoot, you know, for a certain score, of course, too. And, uh, you know, it's a challenge to them. Some of them don't like to write. So the challenge is, is even though you don't like to do this, if we teach you how to do it, then surely you can go from the pen and put it on the paper, or if they have to use an electronic device, do that as well. Uh, ensure authentic learning and assessment experiences. Um, you want the learning to be authentic to the students, so that way um, it means more to them. So if you give them free writing time or something that means something to them, um, you know, you let them just come up with their own ideas to write about, then hopefully that shows that it's more interesting to them. But then also, if it's something they like to do, then back to that sentence structure. Uh, is the sentence beginning with a capital letter? Is it ending in punctuation? You know, commas and different things. Um, they emphasize assessment systems congruent with understanding of child development and standards. Well, that 
as far as for us incorporating that part of it was we needed to make sure that we were teaching the students as far as the standards directly for writing that was going along with the assessment, but the, the, each step that it took to get there, you know, the beginning, the, end, the middle, and the end uh, for the students. All right, and so the second part of my presentation is my EFD 552 diversity project. We had, uh, we were assigned groups and we each had different parts of the actual assignment. And so we had to use a, one specific school out of the group and then use their data and then their demographics. So we also had to implement ways to help understand and respect diversity because there are so many people who don't really, really have an idea. You know, diversity is not just race uh, or culture, but uh, I mean, gender and different things that all go together. Uh, socioeconomic status and diversity. Uh, promote the sense of belonging, purpose, and growth. Um, if you don't feel like that you belong somewhere, or if you don't feel like you have a purpose, or that place doesn't give you an opportunity to grow, you might not do as well. So we want to make sure that we promoted those things through this project um, when implementing in my school. All right, diversity defined as far as how my group did it was there were several different things that all get combined to make the same goal. And that was you know, different, multicultural, economic status, and ability level to all work toward creating that positive, diverse culture. The school demographics. For the particular school that we used um, was 85% white or Caucasian, 13% African American, and 2% Hispanic, Asian, or other. So from the looks of it, just by looking at this chart, it doesn't appear that this school has a lot of diversity. Now, the goals that um, you know we, we tried to implement here, but goals just totally throughout, and not only for the students, but as the, as the staff as well. Develop an atmosphere that is safe for all students to ask for help. Um, that you don't want to put them in a situation to where if maybe the particular number of boys or girls are lower or higher or a certain ethnicity is more represented than another, that they are uncomfortable in that situation asking for help. So we want to give everybody that sense of belonging and purpose so that they feel comfortable um, asking for help. Uh, actively seeking information from people from a variety of backgrounds and cultures. Um, and that is really more for their own knowledge base. but. I want for each student that I come across each day to be comfortable coming to me, asking me for you know any kind of help or asking me a question. Uh, but the same thing goes for our entire staff as well. Um, we have to do a good job as far as understanding each other's backgrounds, um, socioeconomic, cultural, and gender. So that that way, hopefully, we can help each and every one of our students, but also promote that um, environment. And then include people that are different from you. Um, and that means like during kind of unstructured time for the students it might be something like recess for the adults it'd be something geared toward maybe like lunch or free time or planning or something like that to have the teachers get together and just kind of make sure that everybody has that sense of belonging all right and then activities that have been done that we implemented here to they embrace diversity um, the equity definitions where the students are given a list of words and then they have to define them and then at some point um, they'll get together and then they actually compare their definition to the actual definition. Identity tree, that is when uh, the students are given an assignment and we as a staff have done this as well. You know, you're given an uh, assignment to draw a tree and then on that tree pictures that represent you and uh, major events that are in your life. And then hopefully that gives people, not without even reading, but just looking at pictures, gives them an insight to maybe some different things about you, maybe why you feel a certain way about certain things or different things along that line. Um, and then your identity. Students are given a handout with words that are scattered completely all over the page, and then they have to circle three that most relate to them, and then get with a partner and discuss and then tell why. And then, Standards that I feel that I've mastered while implementing this project were to nurture commitment to shared goals. Well, the shared goal is to make sure that we have an inviting and a caring culture and nature at our school um, for not only the students, but the faculty and the staff. 
um, safeguard the values of democracy, equity, justice, community, and diversity. Um, that goes hand in hand with the other. Um, you want to make sure that you're promoting, um, you know, not just one gender or one ethnicity or anything else, but pr pr promote everybody on an equal level so that way everybody, of course, again, back to the sense of belonging, has that sense of belonging. Uh, foster schools as affirming and inclusive places, we want everybody to feel included in our classroom and in our entire school. We also want for parents and everyone else to feel like that they have a place that, you know, maybe they're different in uh, economic status, but we are all under one roof and we all have the same uh, purpose and the same goal. And then to promote the ability of students to participate in multicultural uh, environments, our whole environment throughout our whole school is, is, is different from by gender and by uh, ethnicity and just by different cultures. And so we want to make sure that our students embrace each and everybody's culture so that hopefully that will you know, help prom uh, promote a, a better overall community and environment for the students here. Uh, thank you, and I appreciate you taking the time to listen to my presentation.